All right. <clears throat> All right. So uh, one more time. Hello, everyone. I forgot to uh, record, so I'm going to start from the beginning. Uh, for the projects that you are creating for uh, OP345, make sure that uh, that you actually set your uh, um, your uh, language standard to C++17, which uh, is right clicking on the project <clears throat> and then uh, selecting properties. And in the uh, configuration properties in general, make sure the language standard is set to 17 over here. And that to make sure that what we are doing over here actually is C++17. So, prg.cpp. Okay, let's see what we have talked about last time. It was pretty hectic with the internet going like that. Yes, Volodymyr, what's up? Uh, for that, uh, also, um, I tried to compile uh, my uh, project in the ma in the matrix uh, using the command which is uh, written in the workshop specification, like, like uh, with the std equals C plus plus seventeen, mm -hmm. but it sends me like uh, unrecognized command, so I could compile only. eleven, you know, C plus plus eleven on mm -hmm. matrix. Okay. So uh -huh. that's the error in the chat. Okay, let me see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check it out and I'll make sure that, that it's okay. It's very possible that some settings you have to uh, do to your uh, dot .bash profile. I'll check it out and I'll let you know. Okay? Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> that's that. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Professor. Just a quick question. Yes. Uh, do we need to set each and every project or just once we need to do that? No, that's the thing. You have to do every and each. I tried to find out how to, if you, please go Google it and try to find out if we can actually set Visual Studio to automatically load the language standards for C++17 for its project. And let me know. I tried to. I couldn't find anything. So, um, essentially, I tried to... Um, what I did was not to open any project and go directly to C++ in options into C++ languages. Uh, uh, there was something projects and I went to project settings and I thought there should be something in here that I could actually set, but I couldn't find anything. So uh, if you find it, please let me know. Okay, thank you. Okay, but for now, do it like this. Marina, is that a question? Oh, no, 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 I was just logging in. All right. Uh, so let's see. Um, again, uh, they they knocked the, like when they were plowing the snow in our street, they knocked the communication port at the, uh, in front of my house. It got torn off into pieces. So now they actually took wire from our neighbors and, and brought it. So <clears throat> hopefully um, this is going to be okay. It doesn't do anything to the speed, but... If I hear a choppy and robotic, let me know to reduce the bandwidth somehow trying, I don't know, but we'll see. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, uh, what we were talking about last time, so three, four, five. One and two and three and four, let me see, what did we talk about? So we talked about static variables, the fact that static variables stay alive throughout the, uh, the application um, lifetime of the application, but the scope of them are local. They are visible in their scopes, but they never go away and they always stand as they are. You can create static methods. If you create a static method inside the class, that static method becomes a shared method or a class method, they call it. Class methods are accessible directly through the class name it doesn't you don't have to instantiate the class to call the method that is static static methods can only access static other static methods and uh, <clears throat> properties where uh, regular functions can access all of them so a non a, a static method cannot call a non static uh, element of uh, of a uh, of a class. So that's that. We talked about real syntax of main and said main can th accept three arguments. The first argument is the number of arguments that it receives in the command line. Um, 
you can uh, manually enter the command lines that are entering into your program again through the same prop same uh, place so I can actually <clears throat> go into the project properties <clears throat> and then go to debug debugging and in here I can actually add command line arguments so uh, the command line arguments go here okay I'm gonna click OK now if I copy this into the prg.cpp that I created for this if I run this uh, you will see that it's gonna actually show those values so I don't have to go to the command line and actually enter it so the command line arguments go here <clears throat> and as we mentioned the uh, third argument for main is as essentially a null terminated array of strings and each uh, uh, string over here uh, uh, actually uh, points to an environment variable and the environment variables format is uh, the name of the variable so essentially name of the variable na name of the value environment values uh, an assignment and the value so if you want to uh, find out what is what you have to uh, split it into two uh, before uh, assignment and after assignment so for example if I want to look at this uh, my uh, home path is slash uh, backslash user backslash fard and this one is gonna go as uh, the separator between the two um, that was the real syntax of main and I think that's the, where the class ended uh, yes Volodymyr. Uh for that I found it in Google uh, the um, prototype of main function where is the uh, the second parameter is uh, pointer to pointer so what's the difference is it the same like pointer to pointer of uh, arg v so uh, I have a question that easily yeah. answers your question so I know that uh, pointer is what is uh, this? array actually. The pointer to first. So, no, it's array. I mean, no, it's a pointer. It's not an array. It's an array it? without a body. What I'm saying is that when you receive, if I have something like this, if I have over here integer foo and I have int a, sorry, void foo. This is something that we need to know in three, four, five, and don't have doubt about it. If I do something like this and do whatever to that thing what is the difference Vladimir if I do it like this no, no difference I understand that's the same but You're, just asking if the if no, that's what use... I'm saying so yeah. always um, thank you for pointing it out and beautiful question actually so whenever you see an argument like this you can simply remove this and add an asterisk remove this and add an asterisk and what do you see yeah uh, is it uh, the same is, is it two different prototypes or uh, no it's, it's the, the same same prototype, same prototype. it's so the same they just... are the same these two are identical things no difference okay yeah but like yeah, because right. I haven't taught pointer to pointers yet I don't want to confuse the heck out of you so <laughs> okay. this is what I do <laughs> yeah okay thank you all right so essentially it is telling you that this is an array of strings that's what we call this an array of strings an array of null uh, an array of null ter terminated arrays of characters it's an uneven two-dimensional array that we're going to learn how to create later okay so all the uh, arrays that you created till now two-dimensional arrays that you created they were tabular which means it had a row and a column width so you know that like you have 50 arrays of 25 integers so it you knew that each ar ar array goes up to 25 okay you can actually create arrays of arrays that each array is actually a dynamic array which means you don't know what the width of the array is going to be different it's a two-dimensional array that is uneven we'll come to it soon so these are uneven which means each array uh, that you have in here essentially each array that you see in here as you see the length of each array is different this these are the length of the arrays and each one is different but still nevertheless it's a two-dimensional array are we okay with this hopefully 
start a poll. All right. Uh, hey, Barbat, I have a question actually. Um, if you don't mind, are, are we going to be covering static as well again today, like a brief review? No, you no. Uh, you want me to do talk about it again? I, I just want to, yeah, because I, I, I'm trying to do the workshop and I just want to make sure I understand um, static functions and static variables. Okay, static functions. Um, so static functions are essentially <clears throat> functions that they belong to the class, not the object short form okay static so first of all static variables and static member variables two different ball game when you're okay. dealing with static variable just by itself all it means that this variable is going to stay alive and it's not going to lose its value when the scope is over and when you come back, it's going to keep the value that has. And essentially, the initialization happens the first time uh, the function is called. Are we okay with that? Yeah, I get okay. that. All right. For static member variables, they become a shared member variable between all instances of the class. Therefore, it they don't belong to any individual uh they don't belong to any individual instance. So if these are the instances of the class that I have, a static member variable is something that is sitting in a mid middle and it's accessible by, well, not like that, and is accessible by every individual instance of the class separately, okay? Yeah. Therefore, none of these objects can create it because it doesn't belong to them. Are we clear about that? Yeah. Just yeah. You understand the paradox, right? Like if it belongs to all of them, then who creates it? I cannot create it in the constructor because the constructor is called upon every instantiation of the object, correct? Yes. So, therefore, it cannot be instantiated. This cannot get created using the regular constructions of the class. That is why we actually created completely separately. Oh, I, this thing is always one click behind. There you go. We always created separately at the bottom of the class individually by itself. You see that? Yeah, yeah. So the S that you're saying over here actually doesn't get created over there. It's like a global variable that you create out there, but you make its handle within a class. Therefore, this global variable S is only accessible by class num. Are we good with right. that? Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Beautiful. And that's the reason for this is that every single anything that you do in this territory, anything that you do in this territory, which are the attributes and uh, values and data of a class, they all have to get created. Essentially, these are the ones that build up the class. What we have around here which are the actions that the class take, they have no physical value. They are just actions. They are just things that the class can do. Therefore, they don't get instantiated. You don't create them. The code is a logic, the logic that, sh that is shared between all classes, and these logics cannot get created it doesn't again as, as an example in real in real world that we exist if i know five different languages it doesn't mean that i'm going to weigh more if i if i know how to fix my car if i'm a mechanic and then later on i i learn how to do brain surgery nothing's going to be added to me but my my knowledge it it doesn't carry any phys, any uh actual space are we okay with this hopefully uh, yeah okay so because of that fact when we learn what actually 
we, uh, we, we when we learn what actually static functions are we'll understand static functions unlike static variables they don't need to get created outside of the class the whole definition of what the class does inside what the static function does inside the class is enough to create its logic the only difference is that that logic is accessible by all members so essentially if I have uh, a static function somewhere that does something that static function can only access the static variables of the class and it cannot access any of the properties of the objects why because so many if there are so many of them you cannot mention which one if I tell to the static int number of instances that I have to access value it's an impossibility because this value has one two three four five and six instances where s is only one therefore any static method can only access the uh, a static uh, a member of the class. Now, hopefully, we are okay with this. Are we okay with this, everyone? At the beginning of the semester, I'm going slow and I'm not going to rush into stuff because I want you to understand all these things when we get to all those tricky subjects, three tricky concepts at the end. Um, so if I cannot make it to finish all the topics that we have during the week, I'm going to simply give you more time for the, for the workshop. So don't worry about that. <coughs> okay, uh, so... Professor, just uh, to correct, like to confirm that I understood it, can we conclude that the static variables are declared globally, but they have scope within the class only? Exactly. It's they're not declared globally. They are instantiated globally. They are declared inside the class. Take a look. This is actually this is actually declared inside the oh. Uh, this is actually declared inside the class. But it's instantiates instantiated globally. Because it cannot get instantiated within the class. Class has multiple instances. And same for the static methods? No, so static methods, you don't need to create them. Again, those are methods. They are logics. They don't need creation. Okay. Logic does not need creation. L to define the logic is its creation. Yeah. See, when you are writing a function in, in C language, do you have to create it to call it? No, when you write it, you no. create it, correct? Yeah. Creation of a function is its... Cre implementation of a function is its creation. You don't need to recreate it, right? Yeah, okay. That's why you don't need to instantiate it. You just need to mention they are static and they become the logic that are accessible. But So again, like the other... Like the other... Uh, <clears throat> uh, like the member variables the static methods are accessible by all the instances separately they can access them but the static member variable cannot access any of the methods because there are simply so many copies of the same thing that they don't know which one they can actually access okay yeah if, if you know mathematics, it's a one-to-many relationship. Many can access one. One cannot access many. Okay, yeah, okay. All right? Yeah, good. All right. Wow, look at the screen. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so that's essentially what they are. And <clears throat> static variables, um, functions are really written usually for for stuff that they don't belong to the class really up to the uh, like for example let's put it this way if i want to <clears throat> uh what do i want to do um let me just so a proper example for this is say if i want to create 
uh, uh, a class called name that is dynamic okay so I create a class called name and this name has a value so character pointer uh, it has some data in it that creates the name okay and now in here I want to uh, do all the stuff that is uh, I want to uh, remember that allocate and copy that we created in the in the classes in OP244 remember that allocate and copy so the allocate and copy has nothing to do with a name when you think about it a name has nothing to do with allocation and copying allocation and copying is something that happens all the time it has it is not a specific thing to an object of a name therefore if I want to create an allocate and copy I would say static void allo copy and in here now I'm gonna say for example something like or uh, <clears throat> yeah so uh, uh, like that how do I do allocate and copy? Let me just see. Uh, you don't know pointer to pointer, so I can't do that. You don't know it yet. Oh, you know references. So, so in here, I'm going to say character pointer reference, and I'm going to make this uh, uh, data. And uh, in here, I'm going to say character pointer uh, uh, source. Okay. So now I can do allocation and copying over here. So essentially I can say delete data. So I delete the data. Then I'm going to say over here uh, data is equal to new uh, strlen of source, uh, new uh, character strlen of source. plus one and what else uh, SDR copy into data the, the the value that I'm receiving from source and that was it right so delete the data copy I just want to make sure I'm not making a boo-boo and I'll uh, make this one void okay so now when I do this it actually makes sense so in my constructor if I want to actually do something with this name thingy and let's actually set this one to be null so now in here I can say name uh, and in this name I can actually say allo copy into m data the value of the name that is coming in so character pointer name constant and this is going to be const too <clears throat> something like that so now this allocation and copying it belongs to name but it doesn't belong to any specific name it's a separate function utility function so it is needed in name for logic purposes <clears throat> but no need not an essential action related to a name what I mean is that if you go ask a five-year-old person what a name is, it's not going to say, does allocation and copying? No, it's something behind the scene that is supposed to happen to make your work be done. This is a good uh, thing for a static method that actually uh, just does something for you as a logic. It belongs to the class and not the individual objects. Uh, are we clear about this? So if you wanted to display a name, <clears throat> if I wanted to say what I want to display, obviously display is never a static method because it shows individual names. 
because it's showing individual names in the class it is it is not it cannot be uh, uh, as static it belongs to the objects of the name not the class but allocation and copying is a logic that is shared between the uh, classes instances and it has nothing to do with an individual uh, object uh, by itself so that is that I don't know if it's compiles or not it's just fix it yourself if it's if yours if you are if you need to <coughs> But this is a good example for that. So, <clears throat> why static? Uh, are we okay, Mitch? Hopefully. Yeah. All right. I'm following along. So, talking about scopes. <clears throat> Uh, we know exactly what this. I think I talked about the scopes already. Did I? Anyone? Yeah, yeah you did. We did. Yes, right yeah, we talked about scope. We talked about syntax of main. Uh, something extremely important about types. Uh, the funny thing is that I reviewed it in IPC 144, and probably I hope that you know it, but uh, I'm just going to mention it to just. Uh, I hit something and that header file keeps pumping up. Don't save. Okay, so. <clears throat> so, integer A. Can anybody guess how the output of this thing is going to come out? What the output's going to be? Anyways, let me run it. <clears throat> so as you see, I have 17, 15, 23. Can anybody explain what happened? They're displayed in decimal, decimal system. So first one is decimal, one seven. What is the second one? Octal. And Fantastic. Is... Thank you, Marina. So when you start uh, uh, an, a, an integer value with zero, it's not cute. You're not actually adding a zero just to give a message that it's supposed to be a three-digit number and it's 17. If you start a number, a literal value in C or C++ with a zero, you're actually in base eight, which means it means one eight plus one seven. This is one ten plus one seven. And this is one sixteen plus one seven. And the results are 17. 15 and 23 because of that. Are we okay with this? So be careful, <clears throat> like in early days, like 30 years ago, uh, when I, I, I self-taught C and C++, I never took a course for it, um, but what, when I actually was doing it, I was this geek who wanted to write the codes neat, so I had something that was supposed to be three digits, so I wrote it like this. I For two months I was trying to to debug it and see why I put over there 17 and it goes there 15. I'm not reducing it by two. And you have no idea how long time passed before I found out that actually it is base eight. But uh, that's a sad story, but true. Okay. So in here, I'm going to say, oh, um, where did the other one go? Didn't I delete it? Oh, wait a minute, just a second. Copy. Huh. I think I changed something else. That name thingy is gone. Where is that? Where did it save it? <laughs> Let 
maybe it saved it did it save it in the previous one why is <laughs> yeah it saved it over there i'm gonna bring it over here so uh let me just cancel and so um this is gonna be b dash <coughs> uh careful with oct dot cpp okay and let me bring that from the other one cut paste oh and another thing i wanted to mention probably you already know it but uh, i'm mentioning it to all the classes that has that had the workshop zero anything that you are to rename or delete in a repository that is committed to git or is no longer done with the operating system so for example if this say uh, program.cpp i want to do a prog i have to actually right click over here i have to go tortoise git and i have to say either delete or rename do not rename it with your operating system if you do uh, it's as if the original prg.cpp is deleted from git and the next time you pull it's going to bring it back in careful with it uh, any rename or deleting that you want to do to the committed files to the repository the files that are added and committed to the repository make sure you rename and delete them using tor using git not the operating system or be not not the operating systems delete and rename are we okay with this okay so let's go back and open this up so pointer arithmetic um, we need to understand what happens when you're actually dealing with pointers and plus 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 uh, adding value to a pointer if I say over here integer a and I'll set that integer a to 8 and and I say a plus plus if I do c out a what is going to get printed over here what is the output of this program oh what is the output of this program nine perfect <laughs> that's ipc what you look below ipc 144 good so that's nine but what happens if i do this if i do say for example double pointer p and i set that one to let me just cast it double pointer eight so essentially i put the address eight inside p or if i have integer pointer q integer pointer 8 and say I have <clears throat> short pointer R and I'll set that one to short eight <clears throat> so what happens for every single plus plus that I do so if I do P plus plus and I do Q plus <clears throat> P plus plus and I'll do Q plus plus And I do R plus plus. If I show every of these, and I'm going to go as unsigned because I want to show the values, this is what I'm going to say. So let's actually show what we have over here. Remember, the original value of all these things was 8. And all I did was adding 1 to them. So Q. and R. Now if I run this program you'll see the outcome will be take a look <clears throat> P is 16 by adding 1 Q is 12 by adding 1 and R is 10 by adding 1 
Can anybody explain to me what the heck just happened? Running it one more time. I, I think Professor just added the size of like data type integer. Yeah, perfect, Abby. Perfect. That's perfectly correct. You just uh, got yourself 2% for the midterm test. Okay. So remind me after I mark the midterm, uh, um, um, ask me to add the 2% for you. Okay. So this is how pointer arithmetic works because each pointer is pointing to an individual thing. So if I actually have <clears throat> not that one. If I actually have a, if I actually have uh, a pointer pointing to an integer, what I have is actually the pointer. Now that it's an arrow, I'm going to put it. This is the pointer, pointer, and the pointer is pointing to an integer. Essentially, it points to the beginning of eight four bytes one two three and four five six seven eight nine and ten and eleven and twelve so essentially this is one integer and this is the next integer are we okay with this Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are we okay with this? All right. So, <clears throat> because of this fact, when you add one to the pointer, if, the, if only one is added to the pointer, if only one is added to the pointer, pointer is going to point halfway through the integer, which doesn't make sense. If you are adding one to an integer pointer, it should actually go to the next one, not to the previous, not to the halfway through. Because of that, when you are adding one to any pointer, the size of the target they are pointing to actually will be where they are pointing at. So, for example, if I have something like this, if I have uh, say a class or struct let's call it and that's coordinates and the coordinates have double I don't know X and Y if I have something like this and I create a pointer to a structure so I'm gonna say coordinates coordinate pointer C and I'll set that one to uh, a coordinate pointer and let's say I'll put over there 16. If I do something like this and then I'll do C++ let's actually make everything 16 over here you'll find out why I date 16 why am I not using the good old 8 over there we'll find out later but anyway C++ and then in here I'm gonna go C out C and I'm going to show unsigned C and L. If I run this program, you will see that <clears throat> the 16 for C actually becomes 32 because that structure coordinates is two doubles and each double is 8. So 8 plus 8 is 16. Therefore, you add 1 to it, 16 bytes is going to get added to it. And that's how it works. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> Sir, could you please repeat it? Marina? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat, but I just want to see what Marina has to say. I want to say that I, if we integer 16 of it, and we're talking about addresses, like why uh, values and addresses get all mixed up. Like, it's not mixed up. This is a what? what you, <laughs> these are like I if like let me just try to do something else. Give me a second. Um,
Bow. So let's say, let's say this is an address in memory. And again, Marina, the reason you are doing this, you are, you are saying that is that you uh, give pointers extra credit that I always tell not to say. Can you tell me what is this type? It's a pointer to... to no, no. Double. What is this type? Double. No. Load. No. Address. No. <laughs> it's a double pointer. Okay. What is this type? Integer pointer. Thank you. It's a short pointer, coordinate pointer, right? Mm -hmm. And P yes. is just a variable of type double pointer. It's not... P is not a pointer to a double. Don't confuse yourself by that. P is a variable. What is its type? Double pointer. If I ask you what is the job of a double pointer, then I'm going to say it's going to point to a double in memory. Are we good with that? Yes. Now, I am, I, just for the sake of seeing what the changes are, I am giving the same address in memory to all these things. Essentially, if, if we wanted to do this, we should have said double X, and I would say double, double pointer uh, uh, P is equal to address of X to extract it from memory, but I don't want to do that. I just want to put a fake address in there to see and see what happens when I add values to it? Are we okay with this? Yes, no, I think I'm starting to get it. So, so now these are addresses, and now if I call them, we'll see that the addresses are added with the exact same amount that we want. So for the integer one, it's only one. For the double one, it's eight. For the integer one, it's four that is added. For the short one, it's two that is added. And for the coordinate, that is two doubles, which is two eighths and is 16, 16 is added, which means if you create an array of coordinates, each element will take 16 bytes in memory. And therefore, for the pointer to jump to next element, it has to go 16 bytes further to go to next one and so on and so forth. Are we good with this? Yes. All right. Well, it makes sense. All right, yes, that's the, that's the whole idea. If if these things don't make sense now, when we are going to go up and talk about all the smart pointers and things like that, then uh, you know what I mean. I want everybody to understand how things are happening before we get the, to the uh, juicy stuff, okay? And from there, we actually come to alignment. Now, what is alignment, okay? Now, if I actually go over here and say struct coordinate, if I say C out, Align of coordinates. Okay, if I do write something like this, you will see that it actually says eight, which means a coordinate, a coordinate object can sit at any address whose coefficient of eight. And what the heck that means. Okay? Yeah. To understand what alignment means, first we have to understand how your operating system, your computer, accesses memory. Okay? Computer doesn't want to waste time counting bytes one by one. It wants to do it quickly. Okay? Because of that fact, when you ask the computer to go to certain location, it jumps through several things as if you are running and your steps are getting bigger. If I, if I ask the computer to go to 59th byte, the computer is going to jump through every single byte and count one by one, go to 59. But if I ask the computer to go to 50th integer, Computer is not going to multiply that 50 by 4 and see, oh my god, that's 200, and then count one by one. It's going to jump 4 by 4 to go to the 50th integer. Do we understand that? Big. What are they, 
No, I, 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 I didn't understand. Can you repeat, please? Okay. All right. When the computer wants to access memory, the steps that it takes to get to the piece of memory that you want, the steps that it takes, is the size of the target. Which means if you have a double, computer would get 8 byte steps to get to your double. If it is a character, it will get one byte steps to get to the, to the, to the character. If it's an integer, it will take four byte steps to, the, to get to the integer. Okay, okay, I got okay? it. Because of this fact, you cannot place an integer in address 33. Because 33 in no way can be divided into steps of four. Do we understand this? I can put it in address 36 because address 36 is nine steps of four. Okay? Now, the alignment of this coordinate is right now eight. Why? Because coordinate has two doubles. And no matter how you put it in there, these two doubles, they have to sit on the address that is coefficient of 8. And because there are just two doubles back to back, no matter how you put a coordinate, as soon as the first one starts with 8, the second one will be 8 too. Do we understand this? So everything in this structure can actually sit perfectly okay now I'm gonna mess up this structure just take a look say I want to say I want to add an ID to it too as a character so I'm gonna say character ID so my coordinate ID okay is the coordinate that has an ID too. Now logically when I look at this one what should be the size of the coordinate? Can anybody tell me what the size of the coordinate could can be? Should be? Coordinate coordinate is 18. Yeah, some people are saying 12. Yeah, well, one person says 17, the other one says 9. Okay? You will see how Different. Another person says 16. Um, it is. Uh, it cannot be 16 because the two doubles is 16. So we have a character that is the extra. But let's see actually what the size is. So I can actually go over here and say C out size of coordinate. First of all, let's see what is the size of coordinate. So size of coordinate, coordinate is size of C-O-O-R-D. Okay. And alignment is this one okay just to take a look at what we have done so if you look at the size of the coordinate it's 16 bytes because it's two doubles of obviously but the alignment for it is eight that is supposed to be alignment by the way the alignment for it is eight which means it can sit at any memory with co that is coefficient of eight Okay, now take a look at two um, chord ID actually. What is size of chord ID, and what addresses they can actually what what the coefficient of the address uh, should be so it can so everything sits at a proper place. If you look at the values, the values are going to be. Take a look. 
First of all, size of coordinate is 24. Not a single person actually mentioned that it's 24. Okay? Um, and the alignment of it is 8 still. If it sits at an address of 8, it can actually work. So these are very difficult to understand. Why? Why coordinate is 28, 24 characters? And just take a look at this. If I put it after, let's see what happens. It is still 24. Now, so with this doesn't make any difference. Um, yeah, so, so, I just wanted to show it to you that it, in different scenarios it's different. Um, let me see if it's going to make any difference like this. I don't think it's going to make it because they're all doubles. Uh, um, ID and I'm going to have, so let's do it like this. Int Oh, int val character id. Let's see what is the the thing now. I just want to show you. So now it's still twenty four. Now it is still twenty four. What can I do over here to make it? Uh, I want to just give an example that is. Because this coordinate I put, I have to put equal stuff. But what I'm saying is that let's just um, I'm not talk about it. It's not it's not that important. I'm just gonna uh, let, let's put something like this over here, uh, a long long val. I want to see what's gonna happen now. So it's 32. Now if I do it like this, it's gonna be still 32. It's still 32. No. I couldn't uh, give you a good example on it. But try it later on uh, f with different size of variables. You can have the same thing reorganized in different way and the size of the structure will be different. So let me just see if I can if I can demonstrate something for you now. It's struct uh, test and in here I'm going to go double A integer B um short c integer um another let me just put a character c integer i double d something like that what I wanted to say, if I can demonstrate it fine, if I can't, I'm just going to mention it. So let's put this thing over here. So I'm going to say, see out size of test. So size of test is right now 32. Okay, so size of test is 32. Let me remove that double. Twenty-four. Okay, one more time. Test two. Let me take this. Is it three eighths? Thirty two. Test two. I'm going to put it over here. I hope that it works, and if it doesn't, then I'll come up with the answer later on. I cannot work it on top of my head, but we'll see. I'm going to go size of test two. I'm surprised that it says 32 to this one. How is it 32? 8, 8. Hmm, it should be more than 32. But anyways, let's try it. 
No, they're both 32. I'm surprised. Long. Same thing. Anyways, I'll find that and I'll let you know. But anyways, what I'm saying is that, and we're going to come up to it soon, and I'll, fi and I'll find an example, at, and i put it over there for you so you can see. Um, when you put your variables not in order, when they are not in order, let's put this double out over here, okay? <clears throat> it, it causes uh, defragmentation, which essentially means, so let's put this one like in double over here. So if I... So, if I actually put the third one over here, double, okay, if I do something, uh, double D, if I put something over like this over here, and uh, it, it causes defragmentation, which essentially means when it's actually trying to, it keeps coming the same, I'm shocked. Why is it giving 24 to the size of this? This is 4 and 4, 8. This is, this is 8, 2, 8, 16, 17. That's filling that one up. Let me try. Anyways, I'll do it later. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that when you're actually putting it not in the order of this size, it might occupy more space and for some reason my brain doesn't work right now I don't know why it's not working but I'm gonna set change the test uh, test it later on and put this one properly so you'll see it after the class is over I'm not gonna waste your time more than this when you uh, when it's a long and afterwards you put a C over here they have if it's four bytes and then one byte and then four bytes because it cannot be aligned properly it's gonna put three spaces over here so I say that which essentially be, will be wasted and you cannot use it. So uh, those three spaces will be gone and that's called fragmentation in memory where you cannot fix. But when you do it in the ascending order from the biggest one to the smallest one, always it is safe that uses the least amount of memory possible in the structure or the class or the compound type that you are doing. So keep that in mind. And always remember the alignment of an entity, a compound state, a, a compound object in memory and its size are not the same. Size is the amount of memory that it occupies to be able to be fit in memory. Alignment means where it can sit, which, what coefficient of address it can sit so it can actually be uh, um, referred to and every individual element inside of it will sit on a coefficient of an address that is proper. It's a complicated thing. That's why we have the alignment and the size of. So anyways, so that's the size of and the alignment. So this one I have to fix. So I'm going to say fix example C size of alignment size of and CPP and this is not C. This is C. This is not CPP. Uh, in C, we have the same scenario. Uh, and in here, I'm going to say fix. So I'll fix this one. And uh, when you run it after the class, you will see that uh, the two size offs with the exact same amount of property will be different between test test and test two. You'll see what the example is going to be. Anyways. Uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, so, like in the structure, like in the class of code ID, uh, could you just go up? Upwards? Sorry, sorry, sorry. One more time. One more time. Uh, in the like class of code ID, could you just go upwards for like code uh, code ID uh, class? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So on line number like seven, it's double X Y. So mm -hmm. it would be like around sixteen, right? Yes. And if and if it is like char character ID, so the total would be like around seventeen. Yeah, but it has sure. to go, so it fills the extra seven spaces with garbage. It, it becomes essentially non-accessible. Uh, but like uh, when you like don't in, like when you don't add a long, long value at that moment, the size would be around like 24. Take, right? 
So yeah, what but it's actually, just, it's it would be like seventeen. So see, why is, it's like twenty-four? What, what, that's what I'm saying. What? So you're saying the size is now twenty-four. Why it's not seventeen and it's twenty-four? Correct? Yeah. Okay. So let's make it smaller than that. I just made a double X and an ID, okay? So it's supposed to be nine, correct? Yep. Okay. Run it like this, and it becomes 16, not nine, correct? Uh, yeah. Now I'm going to make it even smaller. I'm going to make it an int. So int X and ID, X is four, ID is one. So you would say it should be five. Why the size is eight now, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see why. Okay, and for that, I have to, I have to do this. Please pay attention. Zero, uh, so it's uh, one, z uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and these are, let's say, the bytes sequence of the bytes in memory. Okay, are you looking at this? Yes. Okay. The first one is an integer, then it's four bytes, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay. So that four bytes will take how long? It takes from here to here, correct? Yes. And what will the ID take? ID will uh, take one. this much, correct? Yeah, three to four. What is the next available? Uh, what is the next available uh, byte over here to be used? five correct yes if i put the structure coordinate what's going to be the access uh, it's the second one over here if i put a second one in here right now okay my question mm -hmm. is what is going to be the address of x in the second one uh, eight five nine. no five correct oh, from five to nine yeah correct five to eight yes but we just mentioned that address of an integer must be a coefficient of four, correct? Yes. So the, the operating system, your machine says, I cannot put an integer on five. Can I put it on six? No. Can I put it on seven? No. Can yeah. I put it on eight? Oh, no. The answer is yes. Oh, sorry, yes. Yes, yes. Because sorry, X. Name. 8 is a coefficient of 4, correct? Yes. Therefore, to make this thing happen all the time, behind the scenes, it's going to add 4 fillers in here. So your coordinate really behind the scenes where you don't see, your coordinate is going to be something like this. Your coordinate is going to be this. Character filler 3. And this filler is garbage. Nobody can access it. It's essentially, so essentially these four, these three bytes will be wasted completely. And it's actually inside the structure, but it's never used because you did not access it. Okay. It just makes it bigger so all the addresses sit on an argument properly. Does it make sense mm -hmm. now? Yes, yes. All right, so that's all. So, so, so it's, if I compile it now, you will see that it's not going to make any difference. If I compile it now, you will see that although I made filler 3 over here, but when I run it, it is still... Oh, I'm getting... Oh, oh I put this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. Sorry about that. Let me just uh, put these over here. Yeah, so if I run it, you will see that it's still going to be 8. It doesn't make any difference. See? It's still 8 even though I added three characters over here. Mm. And if I remove it, it's going to be still eight. Why? Because it wants to keep the alignment correct. It adds that garbage over there, that empty space over there. Mm. It's like you have bottles and each bottle is 250 cc's. If you want to have portions of 100 cc waters, each bottle will have 150 cc of empty space not used, correct? Yes. That's the same scenario over here. Okay. Are we Got okay? It. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Very hard to, 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 to explain, but um, sorry, I had to. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, so, 
Wow. Holy schmoly, we are not even halfway through. Yes, Vladimir. <laughs> yeah, I have a question, but if you don't have time. No, go don't ahead. Worry, just... <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, but, but that's m maybe a silly question. I don't know. Uh, so uh, let's assume that we have a, a memory and half of that memory occupied by integer uh, uh, variables, okay? Okay. But, but, um, but every integer variable located not just next to each other, but in every four bytes. So it's like integer, then four bytes, then again integer, four bytes, like, like zebra, okay? Mm -hmm. And we want to place another uh, another double variable. No, you variable. can't. You're but, gonna get you gotta so, get an all pointer yeah. assignment because you don't have enough memory. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. So uh, in this case, it, we will get an error telling us that not enough space, right? Memory, yes, right? But it's very hypoth like we are living yeah, yeah. in an imaginary it, world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where you yeah, can that's... fill all the. <laughs> yes. So what's the what's the name of error? How do you call it? It's, you don't have enough memory. What do you mean? What's the name of error? No, no, no. You said uh, segment, segment. No, 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 no. It's it's it means not enough, not enough, not enough memory. That's all you're gonna get, out of memory. But we like. But, but... You're not gonna get that oh. error. It's impossible. Somebody be able to do that. You just said, what if I could do that? Can I allocate a space for a double? I would say no. You can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Thank you. But yeah, if you are programming a microcomputer like a computer with 4K of RAM. There are computers like that, and you can program yeah. them with C. Like you have 3,000 bytes of memory in it, 3,000, literally, one, two, three, not 3,000 gigs, not 3,000 megs, not three, 3,000 bytes, single bytes, okay? Okay. When you do like that, then all these things come in play. You have to actually literally sit over there and, and think what goes where so I can save two more bytes. Yeah. Okay. So my remote control works. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Whew. All right. So, uh, all right. Everybody knows what is, everybody knows what it is return do, right? Okay. Do, do you know where this zero goes? Let me just, uh, uh, so we actually don't need to, so I'm going to run. Okay, do you know where this zero go? Do you know where the zero goes when you return zero? We just learned that you can pass stuff to it, but where does the zero go? Okay, half of you are saying no, so I'm not going to waste time on that. That zero goes to the operating system, okay? So if I put over here uh, one, two, three, four, okay? And I compile this code, so I'm going to build this code, rebuild. Okay, and I'm going to go to the folders. I want to see what the folder is. So this is, sorry. So this is my the folder of my executable. Copy. And I'm going to open the command line. Go to drive D, and I'll go CD to that directory, okay? So I'm in debug and this is the January 20th. So if I say over here 03 dash January, tw January 20th executable and I execute this, okay? You see no output happen, right? I'll go echo error level. What did it came out? One, two, three, four. What did I return? One, two, three, four. So essentially, one, two, three, four is sent to the operating system. And depending on which operating system you're working, um, that's what's going to be it. I think in Linux is, I have to ask my wife, she's Linux guru, um, like question mark underline or something. It's that, that type of like, that's the name of the environment variable. But that's the error level. That's what it's going to. So essentially you can send messages to the operating system and the person who writes a shell script program says, 
uh, execute your program then checks the error level if error level was zero program was successful if error level was one disk was right protected if error level was two database was corrupted and so on and so forth that's why zero in that one is a usual thing it means nothing special happened program ended normally but when you pass a code it means I want to send you a message and the message comes there are we okay with the return statement now in submitter program for example that's how I find out if you have an error message or not because the compiler actually sets the environment message when you have some errors in your compiler so when you compile I actually check the error level to see if if compiler failed or not if it failed then I'm gonna say this program has compilers just for you to know anyway so that's return mm, I'm gonna say D return.cpp and this is not a cpp thing it's C, C actually I'm gonna say do echo arrow level in in DOS windows to C one two three four okay Uh, what's the time 247 okay I don't know about you I need like five minutes break I have to go get some a glass of water so five minutes break and then we're gonna come back and we haven't touched anything yet oh my goodness all right oh uh, let's go and come back um, five minutes break I'm gonna go grab some water and come back and you do the same please remind me to uh, resume recording afterward so when you are doing define, def remember that define statements is uh, um, is just a search and replace. It has no language value. It well, no error checking is done over it. Uh, to give you an example, uh, like just take a look at this. I'm just gonna show you something, and you'll see exactly what I mean when I say actually no error checking is done to it. Take a look at this program you look at this program it looks absolute gibberish and I would say okay this int PTR I'm gonna use a defined statement for integer pointer over here to fix that okay so int PTR is a defined statement for this okay then what I will do and for those two define statement, just to show you define statement can be anything, I'll write these two. So first half is gonna be four int i semicolon, and the rest is gonna be not only that, I can put one i over here, and the rest is this. Just take a look. Like like absolute gibberish when you look at it. But when I write something like this, it actually runs, okay? Uh, and it just actually gets compiled and just some crazy thing that it's supposed to do but what you need to do or need to understand over here that unlike what you think now forget about the craziness of the fine statement and has no C++ value C++ uh, error check and type checking in it like, this is not a C++ valid C++ uh, a C or C++ statement ladies and gentlemen take a look at this anybody looks at this as what, what the heck is this like it doesn't make sense but when I compile and run it it will actually compile and run it doesn't it doesn't make sense sorry stop it doesn't make sense okay as you see it's running over here so what's going on here first of all when you create a defined statement like this like in PTR this everything over here the a defined statement is literal search and replace so it searches and replace this one with int p int pointer what's gonna happen p becomes a pointer but q is an integer it's not a pointer anymore and that's just there is the problem because when you see integer pointer p integer pointer q you know that this is wrong and you have to put an asterisk to make it a pointer but when you do it like this and you write over here int ptr 
if you write int ptr over here, you are giving the wrong impression that int, the int ptr is a type and therefore p is int p, an int pointer and q is an int pointer. Do we understand? Do we see the problem here? So, don't use the fine. But that, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so, so by default, both they are gonna come pointers, right? No. Just the p is gonna come pointer, yes. and then q it's not pointer. Q is just a regular integer. Okay, thank you. Okay, so don't use the find statement until unless this is for macros. Macros will learn later, not now. Okay, we'll learn later. D e. Okay, when we learn macros, then you know where the find statement is actually useful to be used. And, and you will see that we'll come to uh, other stuff like const expressions and stuff like that. So, so don't use that one. Instead of, instead of that, what we can use is type def. So instead of writing something like that, I can actually use the type def to create a type, a new type. I'm going to say type define out of an integer pointer and call that an integer pointer. So integer pointer becomes a type. Therefore, it's type, then p is pointer, q is pointer, life is beautiful. Do we understand why we use type def now? Also, type def can be used for some ridiculous stuff that you're going to be using, uh, types that you're going to use that it's going to take a long, long time uh, for typing. So, uh, C D E F type def, like this. So, just take a look at this. Say you want to create a constant onside long, long integer pointer. You know how long it's going to take you to actually do that every single time? You don't want to do that. If you are to use something like that over and over, then you create a type def and you say, okay, it's, it's a constant unsigned long, long integer pointer or unsigned long, long integer or unsigned long, long integer reference. So by doing stuff like this, you actually create shortcuts for humongously big types that you want to write and it's going to make your life much much easier are we okay with that why type def And this is not something new. We have done this already in C language many, many times. Like when you are actually writing C program, like you, when they wrote C programs, you had to keep typing struct this, struct that to recreate it. But as I mentioned before in class, you they used type def and they put the struct over here and they put student over there. Therefore, they didn't have to keep actually creating, keep actually uh, creating uh uh, keep writing struct student this struct student that so essentially we are I'm saying create a type called student out of the type struct this therefore anytime you say student s you create it in C++ it is done automatically we did we don't need to do it but in C language if you wanted to do that that was the case and that comes from the old time so that's type def in C and I'm put dot C in here and not C++ so you know this is actually a C feature and not a C++ so all the uh, developers my time the and C language everybody did that to create like th literally they created the structures like this nobody actually wrote struct something because it's just waste of name you don't you don't want to do that we okay with this Okay, what's the time? Three o'clock. Next one.
let's say you want to write a program to mm, copy a piece of memory to somewhere else so you want a piece of memory and you copy that piece of memory to somewhere else regardless of the type what can you do like if I want to do that, I have to say something like this. What is the smallest uh, type, addressable uh, type in memory? What is the smallest type that we can do in C++? Character. Perfect. Yeah. Good, 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 good. So if I want to do that, I can say void copy mem, and I want to copy memory. And I'm going to say character destination destination and constant character pointer source and integer size now with this I can copy everything to everything if I have uh, a double and I want to copy one double to another I'm gonna say double a uh, is equal to two three point five yada 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 and then here I'm gonna go double B now I can actually say over here uh, something like uh, copy mem and let me show you how the copy mem is done. So in copy mem, I'll go for integer i set to 0, i less than size, and i++. Plus plus. And let's make this size unsigned integer, because it's never going to go neg negative. So that's an unsigned int. And I can say destination i is set to source i. And it copies everything from one, one piece of memory to another. So I can say copy mem into address of B from address of A size of double. Now, doing something like this, I can actually copy everything. But as you see, I'm getting an error because this is a double pointer. In here, I have a character pointer. So to actually use this copy mem, I have to cast this to a character pointer and cast this one to a constant character pointer and then it would work now if, if I actually say double C out B and L I broke down the double into into pieces uh, and I copied it byte by byte from one to another and the result would be two three four four five six so I copied everything from one place to another are we okay with this Oh, sorry, I put the wrong thing, but you, uh, you are saying yes, good. All right, so, <laughs> yes, Captain. All right, so we good? So we understand this. Beautiful. But this is kind of painful. I, I don't want, like, this is character pointer. I don't, I, although I have to do character pointer over here, but uh, the casting everything to character is a pain. I don't want that. I want to be able to just put the address over there and pass it through. For that, we can use a general type of pointer, which is essentially just an address, and it doesn't know what the target is. That, ladies and gentlemen, we call it a void pointer. So instead of copy mem, I would do over here void pointer destination and character constant void pointer source. And therefore, I get this void thingy happening in here. Doing that, obviously because it's void, it doesn't know what is the target. Void means pure address. I do not know what's at the end. So, inside my copy mem, I can, be, without anybody seeing, I can actually say contact, so a character um, ch destination, point, I can get a pointer, ch destination pointer, equals to do my little casting over here so the user of this thing doesn't have to. So I cast that one and the other one is going to be a constant character pointer source that is going to be that one. And therefore now when I copy I can actually do a copying and when I do that, 
I don't need to cast this to anything anymore because void pointer is address of anything and therefore casting is no longer needed. Anything can be a void pointer, but to convert a void pointer to something else, then you have to actually uh, do uh, casting, which I did it in CopyMem and therefore now uh, my CopyMem works perfectly and no casting is needed. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is essentially called void pointer, which means it's pure address. It doesn't care what is sitting at the target. It's just an address. Are we okay with this? And by the way, instead of unsigned int, we can use an, in, uh, an internal type of C++ that is called size T, by the way. Size T is essentially the uh, same thing as uh, um, Outside it, it's it's a it's a size type, okay, um, and uh, I think size of actually returns size t. There is you see that size of returns size t too. You can see if you look at it over here, yeah. So that's that. So if I run it, and that's that. All right, uh, Vladimir, you said no. How many uh, bytes um, the uh, the compiler allocates for void pointer? All pointers, regardless, all pointers, regardless of the type, they are all the same size. Okay, yeah. So it's uh, eight, I, as you remember, right? You don't change oh. the size of envelope when you're sending a mail. The address for everything is exactly the same, the space for address. Address doesn't occupy different space. It's the type of the target that is different, not the address. We good? No, <laughs> no. Sorry, no. I didn't. I, uh, yeah. So yes. So yeah. The ad, uh, actually, the type uh, occupies the memory, but I think the pointer also has a. Um, the pointers have a uh, like. The size, right? No. Of course they do. They are all exactly four four bytes, depending on your four operating bytes. system. Yeah. Could be depending okay, on your bytes. platform. It used to be two, then they became four. Now we have eight. So okay. So essentially, what I'm saying is that it doesn't matter what type of pointer you have. What did I do? Seriously, even my copy paste is going out of whack. My brain, seriously, after a while, gets shut down, and then <laughs> my apologies. My apologies on this. I'm getting old. So in here, I'm going to say character. Here, I'm going to say int. In here, I'm going to say short. And in here, I'm going to say student uh, class uh, struct student uh, character name 50 and integer student number and student pointer two. They are all the same, no difference. Four, 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 four. Size of all the pointers are the same. It's the target that is different and that distinguishes the type of a pointer. Are we okay with this? All right. Five minutes. Let's see if I can quickly go through it. So, Did I save it as thing? I did, didn't I? No, I didn't. So this is uh, void. EFG, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Uh, we have an H. So H, it's I, is E, F, G, H, I, and I is uh, void pointer dot CPP. By the way, void pointer is C, it's not CPP doesn't make any difference. It's not a C++ thing, it's a C thing. 
So, please, ladies and gentlemen, are we okay with these beautiful functions of mine? I love the fact that I act, when you actually bring your f bring your mouse over a, a literal value, it actually shows that a, no double value is precise. Look at the value over there. That's the how seven is kept in the in the memory. Anyways, so double tax is that value. Int value I'm returning ten. This tax value is returning the reference of that tax. Full reference A is receiving a reference and setting it to two, three, four. Are we okay with this? These beautiful functions of mine. L value is essentially anything that you can put it at left side of an assignment operator. That's what we call an L value. R value is something that you cannot put it at the left side of an assignment operator. R values cannot be set to anything. The most the easiest thing uh, to mention is this. So let's just go through it and see what happens. I'm going to go through them one by one, creating some variables. I'm not going to type this. We don't have time. I'm just going to copy it and explain. So integer i, integer pointer p, i is set to 6. i is l value. r is r value. We are good. You can set it. Double t, p is address of i. We are perfectly OK. You can say p is uh, address of i. We are perfectly OK. But you cannot say p is equal to address of 76. Why? Because 76 is an R value. It's not an L value. An address requires an R value. Requires an L value. Okay. Just to um, go through it. So, uh, you cannot say uh, you cannot say value. In here, you cannot say value. It's set to what is the value? Yeah, you cannot say value is set to twenty. You can't do that. Value is an R value. It's returning an integer. You cannot set it to anything. So this is wrong. The same thing as 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 top. It requires an L value, but you can say tax value is equal to 0 0.234. Why? Because this is an L value. An L value is a reference. We can actually set it to something. Are we okay down to here? All right. Also, we can easily say Although this one was wrong, we could not say it. We could simply say double pointer is PTR is equal to address of tax value because tax because this is an L value. This is okay, okay, because tax value is an L value. We okay with that? I can say foo i. There is no problem with that. If the reference of i is going to be passed over there, it's two, three, four, five. But I cannot say foo one, two, three. That can't be done. Why? Because a reference needs a reference needs r value, uh, l value, and this is not an l value. Okay, not okay. Not okay. Requires. An L value. Do we understand what is the difference between an L value and an R value? Okay. R value. It is 315. I'm going to end with this little thing over here that you can actually 
create some uh, create uh, uh, a reference that only accepts and detects R value. Take a look. If you put two ampersands, essentially it means you want an R value to be uh, passed to it, not an L value. If you say display reference A, it means you want an L value, not an R value. Take a look at here. If I write display I, automatically the one that is an L value will be called. If I say display 25, the one that has one's an R value will be called, and therefore it works as follows. This, oh, 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 oh. this, ladies and gentlemen, this, ladies and gentlemen, essentially is C, uh, C++, uh, C++, so it's not, uh, in C, you cannot do this. So you can actually detect with a function what type of value you are getting. Is it an R, R value or L value? And this becomes very handy soon to come when we are going to talk about copy constructors, uh, copy uh, move constructors, and move assignments. Okay? Uh, and that's it. Um, so, um, uh, if we, you, you will be kind if the next time when you're coming, you tell me for that, let's talk about classes and L values and R values. And I'm going to explain a few things on that one before we continue to uh, move constructors and move assignments and so on and so forth. Any questions? Uh, Professor, just a silly question. Go ahead. Like, uh, Will, will there any be plenty like if I fail to submit part one by today? You you are very faint. I can very very uh, barely understand what you're saying. If you could bring the microphone in front of your mouth, I would really appreciate it. Yeah. So I was asking like, will there be any plenty if we fail to submit part one by today? Like as it is of zero percent. Oh my God! I can't understand you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I cannot hear you. Uh, Say it one more okay, time. Let me type. Uh, I will type it in the chat. Oh, type it, type it, type it. Meanwhile, while he's typing, Parth, you tell me what's going on. Parth? Rohan. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, Parth, go ahead. Uh, no, I didn't say anything. Oh, you, you put yes over there. It means you have a question. Rohan. Do you have a question, Rohan? I think... Parth and Rohan, people like that, just they have their little sister over there. As soon as you see something comes up, click yes, I'm going out. <laughs> okay, let me see. Will be there any? If I fail to submit P1 by today. P1 is not, part one is not submittable. Read the instructions. In OP345, it's only part two that you're submitting. Part one is preparing you for part two. If you can directly okay. do part two, ignore part one. Don't do okay. that. It's bad for you. Actually, I was busy from last few days with the other subject. And I have yeah, so part one, is not, part one is not like that. Part one, you just submit it. It's going to tell you, successful. That's it. And you're not going to submit anything to anyone. Okay. It just tests it for you. To be true, I have not even seen the workshop one yet. Yeah, anyway, so so see it. <laughs> yeah, I will. All right, everyone. 320. Um, for, the next class is sorry. beginning. Anyone? Um, George, that, go just, ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. I just want to let you know that when I, uh, so I'm a guest, I'm not your student. When I click on your uh, OOP 345 active session with Fadat, so it's not, uh, it's showing me that you end, ended the session. But actually, yeah, that's, your session that, is going on. No, no, that's when you. If that's from last because it's from the last one. I see. The so last. The, the reason is, is that, the reason that happened is that we had problem with internet, internet last time, so I had to cancel the class halfway through. So the uh, meeting yeah, was going I on, see. but it was, but uh, right now, let, let me just try it right now. You, you're trying. You're scaring me, can man. I 
Can, can I finish my sentence? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I was, I was active on your uh, last session too. Oh. What happened is last two times that I wouldn't, I wasn't able to enter your class. I was texting my friend to she sent me the link because she was able um, to enter your active class. And then when I click her link, it's showing me that just put your name and enter the class. But when I open it from GitHub, you it's are showing caching. Me... Your your browser is caching it. Your browser okay, is so caching the last days. So if what I go, what can I do to fix it? Uh, clear the cache. Just see how can I clear my my browser cache or not to yeah. my browser to cache certain websites. That's like you go do refresh to see if it gets it or not. When you click over here and this doesn't come yes. up, this doesn't come up, it means I ended mm -hmm. the session and you have the link from last time. Correct. Oh, I see. Even on your active sessions, right? Even the session if it's going on. Yeah, but if I for you know, if I forget to up because every time I start the class, I literally open GitHub and I update the link so you can actually go okay. to it. I if I forget, okay. yes, that happens. And if I forget, and if you see you can't come in, message me on Teams. Tell me far that uh, I could. It, it says it's it's like that. And I'll take a look at Teams, and I'll take a look at it, and and we'll know. You can always okay. like uh, come to my. Uh, office so click on okay. my office on the schedule and uh, tell you so you can uh, so I accept you in the group and you can actually ping mm -hmm. a message over there and even if I don't see it other students will see it and tell me in the class that far that George wants to come to my class to, to your class and I couldn't get him and I'll take care right. of it okay uh, I appreciate that no Thank problem you. all right are we all good no questions all right Everyone have yourself a beautiful day. And uh, the next day is going to be intense. Come right from the beginning. And I see only 20 people today that they came to class. So it means 20 out of 35 are going to pass. Have yourself a beautiful day. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Farad. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Farad. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, 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 bye. Thank you, Farad. Bye.